Greetings. Mecklenburg County and the City of Charlotte are pleased to welcome you to the 2022 Crowns of Enterprise Awards Ceremony. My name is Rocio Gonzalez, Executive Director of the Women's Business Center of Charlotte. We are coming to you from our offices located in the beautiful portal building on the campus of UNC Charlotte. I am honored and excited to be your host at today's event. I was the 2019 Diversity Advocate of the Year Award recipient. To the nominees and award recipients, I was in your shoes before, and I know how exciting it is to have someone's hard work and dedication be recognized. And thanks to all of you for joining us this afternoon to recognize and honor businesses that demonstrate exemplary leadership and sound business strategies. This year, we will be celebrating the 2022 nominees and winners. We will honor local businesses in each of the following categories. Minority Business Enterprise of the Year, Women Business Enterprise of the Year, Small Business Enterprise of the Year, Prime Contractor of the Year, Diversity Advocate of the Year, and Media Personality of the Year. We are celebrating the 11th anniversary of the Crowns of Enterprise Awards. We are excited to have current nominees, previous winners, business resource partners, elected officials, and the community at large here with us today. Let's give everyone a virtual round of applause. Let's also see where everyone is tuning in from. If you are able to do so, list your city and state in the chat box. As we kick things off, we would like to hear from some of our elected officials from Mecklenburg County and the City of Charlotte. First, we would like to welcome the Chair of the Mecklenburg County Board of County Commissioners, Chairman George Dunlap. Good afternoon. I'm George Dunlap, Chairman of the Mecklenburg Board of County Commissioners. It is my honor to be a part of another Crowns of the Enterprise Awards ceremony. A few questions for you, Commissioner Dunlap. What does Crowns of Enterprise Award mean to you? Well, this year we celebrate 11 years of Crowns Awards, 11 years of spotlighting businesses that serve as the backbone of our community, 11 years of development, innovation, and growth, 11 years of navigating challenges in the business world and in our community, none bigger than COVID-19. What words of encouragement can you provide to businesses in the Charlotte-Mecklenburg region? Well, if you're here today, it's because you have persevered through the hardest of times. You stepped up and did what you needed to do to survive. You changed your business model when it was necessary, adapted to changing customer needs, and you sought the help of the professionals at the Mecklenburg County Economic Development Office. Only you know everything you did to keep your business up and running. The long nights, early mornings, the sacrifice, and the prayers. It is an understatement to say that you're resilient. Fact is, you are a real life superhero. You were there for us when we needed you the most. And despite the obstacles, you continued to serve the residents and businesses of our community. So I say to you, wear your cape proudly and congratulations on this well-deserved recognition. Thank you. Next, I would like to welcome Charlotte Pro Tem, Julie Iselt. Hello, I'm Charlotte Mayor Pro Tem, Julie Iselt. Congratulations to all the 2022 Crowns of Enterprise Award winners and nominees. And I would like to ask you the same questions. What does Crowns of Enterprise Awards mean to you? The Crowns of Enterprise Awards provides a chance for us to celebrate minority and women-owned small businesses and entrepreneurs and highlight their accomplishments, show support and appreciation for their role in providing good paying jobs in our city. And in addition to the jobs, they also offer outstanding services and products to residents. And what words of encouragement can you provide to businesses in the Charlotte-Mecklenburg region? Stay involved, stay networked with each other, learn from each other and offer advice to each other and keep doing what you're doing to provide great paying jobs here and such a great variety of jobs and services in our community. Thank you, Commissioner Dunlop and Mayor Pro Tem Iselt for bringing greetings and inspirational words today. Thank you so much. I am Jamelia Davis, Business Diversity and Inclusion Director with Mecklenburg County's Office of Economic Development. 
Hi, my name is Stephen Coker, Program Manager for the Charlotte Business Inclusion Program, also known as CBI. We are excited to join forces each year when it comes to the planning and promotion of this event, as it is aimed to celebrate the hard work and dedication of our diverse businesses and the community that advocates and supports them. The 2022 Crowns of Enterprise event nurtures relationship building between our diverse businesses, government officials, and agencies, in addition to increasing the community's awareness of the award recipient's brand. We look forward to continuing to see great things from these nominees and winners. You have all dedicated yourself to growing your businesses and impacting this region's economy. Today, we honor and salute you. Congratulations, Congratulations to, to the 2022 Crowns of Enterprise nominees and winners. Our first award category is the Minority Business Enterprise of the Year. This award is presented to a minority-owned business certified by the state of North Carolina's historically underutilized business office that has demonstrated sound business strategies while driving economic development in the charlotte mecklenburg region. Furthermore, they have shown a commitment to giving back to the community they serve. And the winner of the Minority Business Enterprise Award goes to RJ Leeper Construction, LLC. We won. We did. We did. <laughs> Congratulations, we won. <laughs> It is an honor to stand here today to accept the Crown of Enterprise Award. This is a, truly a significant honor. Good afternoon, my name is Lori Spratley. I'm the interim COO for RJ Leeper. I'm Ben Hutchins, the Workforce Development Director at RJ Leeper Construction. RJ Leeper is a minority-owned construction company. We were founded in 1993 here in Charlotte, North Carolina by our former owner, Mr. Ron Leeper. So the headquarters of Leeper was established here in Charlotte, North Carolina. The former owner, Mr. Ron Leeper, he was um, born and raised in Belmont, North Carolina, right outside of Charlotte. He was a former city council member, and so he made stake here in Charlotte, North Carolina as his headquarters. Our most proudest moment at RJ Leeper, I would say, is our workforce development program. The workforce development program is where we team up with various vineyards, whether it's the Urban League, the United Way, Goodwill, and we identified individuals to provide them with work. And they will come and work on our various projects. Uh, we have been very instrumental in bringing in over 100 um, individuals to work on the Charlotte Airport, as well as the Charlotte Convention Center. What was unique about those two public projects is we put in place an Exhibit W. It's a contract requirement that the trade partners must adhere to. So they had to adhere to, and the stipulations in our workforce development initiative then was that each contractor on the project must hire one individual, pay them a living wage. At that time, we didn't know what a living wage was, so we said $15 an hour. So we've grown from that, and we've gone back, and we, we're now averaging about $18 an hour for individuals, and the average length of time on a project is a year. Now, since we're contractors, we've added in this caveat that you can allow that individual to work on one of our projects or one of your projects too, as long as you retain them for one year. Prior to that, we have been doing workforce development in the community with individuals helping people to get employment and also with companies developing those companies. So when you think about the workforce development, we are a state of art when it comes to workforce development. When we look at our major competitors here in Charlotte, they have to actually take in pages out of our playbook. So when we say what we're proud of, Leaper is truly proud of the workforce development and the vision that our former owner, Ron Leaper had, and believing in the apprenticeship and understanding the importance of giving back to the black and brown communities. The advice that I would give is to um, follow a model that we've created that is extremely innovative to invest, and I don't mean just saying it, but to invest in our communities by helping individuals and helping companies. We're giving the individuals an opportunity to be valuable citizens within the Charlotte Mecklenburg. Congratulations to our 2022 Minority Business Enterprise of the Year, RJ Leeper Construction, LLC. The second award of the afternoon is the Women Business Enterprise of the Year. This award is presented to a woman-owned business certified by the state of North Carolina's historically underutilized business office that has demonstrated sound business strategies while driving economic development in the Charlotte-Mecklenburg region 
and has also shown a commitment to giving back to the community she serves. And the winner of the Women Business Enterprise Award goes to Sunshine Media Network. Thank you, thank you so much. This is a team effort for sure. This is a lot of people believing in someone a lot of people didn't believe in. A team of people a lot of people don't believe in. So this is awesome. Thank you. I started Sunshine Media Network a decade ago now, and my mission has always been to amplify the voices and expertise of women and minority entrepreneurs and experts. I'm a social entrepreneur, which means my corporate clients help fund the philanthropy I'm able to do for small businesses and experts who are trying to get their story out to a broader community. In the past decade, I have been so privileged to work with the great Maya Angelou. I was her videographer team for the last year of her life, which was such a full circle moment for me. Um, I read her books growing up. I followed her journey and her words. She inspired me so much. So to be in a professional situation with her and trusted with something so important was definitely monumental personally. Um, I've worked with the New York Giants. I've worked with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I've been a videographer for many presidential candidates in the 2016 campaign. All the national news networks have reached out to me in some form or fashion over the past decade. But truly, the, the jobs that Sunshine Media Network lives for are the ones that are telling untold stories and the ones that are building people up who just need that extra push. Um, we truly try to shine a light on um, in information and people and experts and experiences and, and use that light to build a better community and a more loving community. Anyone who knows me knows every day is a learning experience. I push myself consistently. In my business, I have always leveled up with every single job. There's always something to learn, whether the industry is evolving and changing or I take on a client in an industry I've never been exposed to before. I hear a story that I've never been exposed to before. My proudest moment would, would just be the journey. There, there isn't any one that outshines another in my perspective. I'm fortunate people trust me with something so important to them. And um, I just value every opportunity I have to meet someone new, learn something about them, and then tell other people about that experience or that story. Because of my background and being a teen mom, there weren't a lot of expectations set for me. And in a way, that's easy. No one expected me to be anything or do anything. So every day <laughs> and um, every client that trusts me is, is a win. And I get emotional because I do this work to help other people see that someone believes in them, that they can be something, that they have something to contribute, no matter what circumstances they're in, what they look like, what field they choose. A woman can be a videographer. A woman can do things. Um, people who come from public housing, people who come from rough backgrounds, um, people who a community say, you're not gonna be anything have options and have something to contribute. And I just love the opportunity to really nurture people and, and help them in any way I can. And so every chance I'm given is a win that I'm proud of. And I hope to extend my success to other people so then they can find their own success. I've lived across the country. I moved a lot growing up and I just landed in the region and I got my first TV news job in Charlotte. I was very fortunate to break through my first market in Charlotte, and I just stayed. I love Charlotte. There's so much opportunity here. I've grown up with Charlotte as Charlotte's grown up, and I just love the energy that the Queen City has. We have such a diverse range of businesses, of people, of lifestyles. I think it's just a great mix of so many things that anyone would look for when they start their business, when they have their families, and when they want to build their own lives. So, I, I mean, Charlotte is just, I couldn't imagine being in another city, honestly. To find out that a pro bono client nominated us without us knowing was 
we were, <laughs> we were screaming in the office um, because it says a lot about how we made them feel. And we work really hard to make people feel good. We want them to leave the video experience. We want them to leave the, the high stress, high pressure job with us, being on camera and feeling good about it, feeling good about themselves. So I would encourage anyone in the community to nominate a woman or minority owned small business for the Crowns of Enterprise because it is like the next thing that pushes them to keep going. It's not easy to be a business owner. It's not easy to be a minority woman business owner. And you know, that little nudge of you're doing a good job can really get them through the next year of, of entrepreneurship. Congratulations to our 2022 Woman Business Enterprise of the Year, Sunshine Media Network. Our next award is for the Small Business Enterprise of the Year. This award is presented to a City of Charlotte certified small business enterprise that, among other attributes, has driven economic development in the Charlotte-Mecklenburg region and is giving back to our community. And the winner of the Small Business Enterprise Award goes to 1202 Beatty Sport LLC. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's pretty cool. I'm honored. I'm kind of speechless. Um, normally I have a lot to say, but um, I can appreciate that the, they, they love the authenticity that I can bring to the table. 1202 Betty's Ford is commercial real estate in the historic West End Washington Heights neighborhood of Charlotte, named after Mr. Booker T. Washington in 1913 as a planned neighborhood for African Americans. Across the West End, you will find many pockets named after notable African Americans. Betty's Ford Road stretches 15 miles long, beginning in Uptown Charlotte, and includes residential and commercial small-owned businesses by people that look like me, such as fresh fruit markets, pharmacies, schools and universities, banks, barbershops, entertainment hubs, shopping boutiques, vibrant workspaces, art labs, and beauty salon plus tons more to serve the local residents and continues to stand tall despite the deep-rooted struggles, which all builds the character of Betty's Ford Road, which is a symbol of culture, tradition, power, and hope. 1202 was built in the late 1920s, and in 1986, the late Mr. Melton of LD Financial Services began offering wealth building strategies as he recognized the generational wealth gap. It was only my creator that afforded the opportunity to even attempt to live out his legacy in 1202. Embodied in 1202 is Shemedrius, which disrupts and dismantles interconnected systems of oppression in black and brown communities. We provide common and no-nonsense approaches tactics, problem solving, and solutions around proven disparities, and provide structure and vision on demanding long impact and change around basic human rights. Our sweet spot is collaborating with local residents, community leaders, and advocates, business owners, for-profits and non-profits, and the youth. And in that collaboration, coming together as one united front to strengthen our voice and power as we all share the same stories, pain, soul, and aspirations for the future. Being united and sharing an abundance of knowledge, resources, come efficient and fail-proof solutions, which is the goal and mission. About 10 years ago, my husband's job relocated our family to Charlotte. Since being here, we have created a village of family, friends, and supporters around us. The west side of Charlotte is where we live, work, and play, and that was very important to my family to invest in a community that looks like where we grew up. Our goal in our marriage is to serve as vessels to make a difference and challenge our children to do the same. And whereas my husband tackles the youth through Change University, my personal commitment is to disrupt and to dismantle systems of oppression. There are endless similarities in the West End Charlotte that make up the scene of my hometown, College Park, Georgia, from the residents, community events, cookouts, uh, bargain shopping, small business owners, to the lack of resources, redlining, and systems of oppression 
where as opposed to some areas in College Park where families were pushed out, Charlotte community residents and leaders are being intentional to ensure the community culture stays vibrant and long lasting through the rise in development through tax breaks so that the elderly are not displaced, um, home repair programs, legal advocacy, and much more. We as a community have a duty to ensure cultural vision and development combat gentrification and reclaim the community. So yeah, West End Charlotte is where it is for us. My proudest moment is being a wife, mother, daughter, sister, and friend, all while being a humble servant to my creator and wearing my black girl magic. I can only hope and pray that I'm making my ancestors proud through my actions from understanding their struggles and sacrifices. It's an honor to play a part in opening the doors and breaking barriers in an industry that has lagged in diversity where minorities and especially women are underrepresented. My most valuable learning experience is remaining humble, never forgetting where I came from, and keeping many wise people in my corner. Congratulations to our 2022 Small Business Enterprise of the Year, 1202 Beatty's Ford LLC. Let's take a moment and give a virtual round of applause to the winners of the 2022 Minority, Women, and Small Business Enterprise of the Year winners. You truly deserve this acknowledgement. At this time, we will hear from two elected officials that chair the Economic and Workforce Development Committees from two of our favorite government organizations. Good afternoon, Commissioner Susan rodriguez McDowell. Good afternoon. I'm District 6 County Commissioner Susan rodriguez McDowell. On behalf of Mecklenburg County and the County Commissioners, I want to congratulate each of you for being nominated for the Crowns of Enterprise Awards in your respective categories. You all are to be commended for your hard work, adaptability, and perseverance through one of the most challenging times in our history. What does Crowns of Enterprise Awards mean to you? As the chair of the county's Economic Development Committee, one of our top priorities is increasing participation in our minority women and small business enterprise program. That's why activities like this are so important to us. Mecklenburg County's economic development team works to create a globally competitive region. We support business growth and vitality. By doing this, we enhance the quality of life for everyone in our community with more job opportunities and better paying jobs for our residents. The county has increased efforts to support small businesses by expanding financial assistance opportunities through MEC lending and providing educational opportunities through programs like Get Up and Grow, and our hugely successful business launch pad. What words of encouragement can you provide to businesses in the Charlotte Mecklenburg region? The Small Business Services team supports businesses and entrepreneurs like you, so I encourage you to take advantage of the resources available to you and to reach out to our team when you have questions or need help. Thank you for your commitment to small business, jobs creation, and economic growth in our community and congratulations on this much-deserved recognition. Thank you. Next, let's welcome to the virtual stage Charlotte City Councilman Malcolm Graham. Hello, I am Charlotte City Council Member Malcolm Graham. I represent District 2 and chair Charlotte's Economic Development Committee. Congratulations to all the 2020 Crowns of Enterprise winners and nominees. A few questions for you, Councilman Graham. What does Crowns of Enterprise Award mean to you? Small businesses provide jobs and services and opportunities to neighborhoods and communities across Charlotte. In addition, minority and women-owned businesses provide vital goods and services that may not otherwise exist. And lastly, small businesses and entrepreneurs are the backbone of our local economy and deserve to be celebrated. Absolutely. And what words of encouragement can you provide to businesses in the Charlotte-Mecklenburg region? If I can provide words of encouragement, I would say keep the faith and do the work. Certainly being a small business owner is no small feat. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Keep the faith, do the work. And now we're going to take a two minute intermission. Remember to put your comments in the chat and let us know what city you're tuning in from. We'll be right back.
Thank you for staying with us in this great celebration. Since the inception of the Crowns of Enterprise Award in 2011, we have given the MBE, WBE, and SBE awards. In 2016, the Prime Contractor and Diversity Advocate categories were added. In 2022, we were excited to add Media Advocate of the Year. These three categories focus on the importance of diversity and inclusion and are presented to an individual or organization which champions diversity and inclusion's best practices, ideas, and strategies to increase the overall participation of MWSBEs in the Charlotte-Mecklenburg region. Our next award is for the Prime Contractor of the Year. This award is presented to a prime contractor that demonstrates exemplary leadership while embracing and engaging in diversity initiatives. And the winner of the Prime Contractor of the Year Award goes to Viridian Marketing. Wow, thank you. I am, I was already so flattered. and so moved to be nominated that someone thought about us to nominate us was quite the honor. But to really receive this that we've won is, well, you can see it's overwhelming. Viridian Marketing was started in May of 2012, so we're about to celebrate our 10th anniversary milestone moment. Um, our company works to create connections for our clients, and that can be brands or organizations. And then we work to build out strategies and tactics that actually deliver results, we think, beyond expectations. Um, we're nimble by design, we're a boutique agency, so that we can work the way our clients need us to work. To give you an illustration of, of a client where, where we have done the kind of work I'm describing is MEC Pre-K, which was um, the effort by the county manager and approved by the ba uh, Board of County Commissioners to create universal Pre-K in the, the county um, so that all four-year-olds would have the opportunity for high quality free Uh, pre-k education and in 2018 um, this was approved as an initiative and there were 600 children served that year and our job in june of that year to have uh, was to create the marketing assets so we developed the logo and we created a website um, for parents and families to go to to get information about the program we created social media channels Um, we delivered event um, uh, executions. We went door to door, um, literally with flyers, to try to be sure these historically underrepresented uh, families were aware of this program that was being launched that summer. So we had weeks to put this together because they wanted to have the children be able to start that fall, which was, uh, you know, really a two-month turnaround. And uh, it was one of, uh, of our more rewarding programs that we've been involved with. And we continue to work with them on the strategies to, and communications to our families to, to have them understand the importance of pre-K for the trajectory of the child, but also to understand when to register, how to register, um, what's required uh, in terms of paperwork. And, and that's all part of that strategic marketing communication. And it's, it's a real honor to, to get to do that work. I came here for work uh, right after I graduated from UNC and began working on the effort to bring the Carolina Panthers here and just fell in love with the, the city, the county, the atmosphere. It was just a really spectacular place to be. And I think the contacts that I have um, here and the roots we have uh, really set me up for being able to start my own business after working in the bigger agency world. My proudest moment was our work on Super Bowl 51. Um, we were agency of record for Cisco with an S, food service company. They're a Fortune 45 company. They're 53 billion in revenue um, and the largest food service company in the world. And they had Viridian, a small boutique agency out of Charlotte as their agency of record. And the Super Bowl was coming to their hometown headquarters of Houston. And we thought that was a wonderful opportunity. They were trying to contemporize their brand. They were trying to um, 
get excitement from their employees. They had had some changes in how they were working compensation. So bringing something that they could be proud of, give them a platform of communication with their customers that wasn't just coming in and taking an order. And we presented that idea uh, to them and um, we began to negotiate with the NFL for the rights. We managed um, all of the uh, sales promotion campaigns that uh, created incremental revenue for, for the business. We created all the marketing materials and managed all the details with celebrity athletes to come to customer events. And I think um, the pride that we saw from the client, from senior leadership all the way down to local markets was really rewarding. And to think that I had done programs like that with a big agency behind me with lots of resources that we could do that as a small team together and be um, you know, equally as successful for the client was very rewarding. Congratulations to our 2022 Prime Contractors of the Year, Viridian Marketing. Our next award is for the Diversity Advocate of the Year. This award is presented to an individual or organization who champions diversity and inclusion's best practices, ideas, and strategies to increase the overall participation of MWSBE opportunities in the Charlotte-Mecklenburg region. And the winner of the Diversity Advocate of the Year goes to HCAC Hispanic Contractors Association of the Carolinas. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it is very important for everyone, you know, to help and support small businesses. Hispanic and the whole WMV community, they have the same needs. And, uh, but especially Hispanics, they sometimes have the need for the language or they have that different barrier but they all have the same capacity to be successful. And I'm very proud to serve the Hispanic Contractors in the Carolinas. I work for the Hispanic Contractors Association of the Carolinas. The ACC is a nonprofit that I started in 2006 here in Charlotte with the idea of helping small contractors in the Hispanic construction community. Because Hispanic and minority contractors, you know, they're great at what they do, but they don't really know how to manage a business. And that's exactly where we come in. We help small businesses to build capacity. There is a really big Hispanic population and uh, a small NWB uh, community here in, in Charlotte. We are the Carolinas chapter, so it's very convenient for us to move across the Carolinas, North Carolina, South Carolina. We go to rally um, very conveniently to uh, the Triad and to South Carolina. As the executive director of the association, I have had a lot of proud moments. It is great to say that small businesses succeed, but also the proudest moment that I had is that we have an annual awards. Uh, the ACC Brilliance Awards is hosted every year where we recognize the small businesses of the contractor of the year. And at the beginning, back in 2012, we had uh, small businesses presenting themselves in a more humble way. Um, they were still generating a lot of income, but not as, mu as much. Um, and after four or five years, all the nominees, they were generating over a million dollars in revenue. And the way they were presenting themselves uh, it, was, it was a huge difference. Diversity and inclusion is very important to me. Um, I'm Hispanic and I was a woman, I guess I'm also included a minority. Um, and there's a lot of potential. And sometimes the small businesses or the underserved communities, they don't have the resources that other communities have. And it's all about education. It's not that the resources are not there, but they don't know about the resources. So I guess connecting a small business with opportunities or connecting individuals in general uh, minorities with opportunities and letting them know that uh, the tools are there, the connections. Sometimes they think they're not ready. They think they, they're maybe not enough, but um, many of them don't believe in themselves. So, you know, connecting them with opportunities and showing them the right way uh, makes a huge impact. And, um, and I think diversity and inclusion is important because um, there are a lot of minorities here in Charlotte. And, and the Carolinas, and they have the tools. If they have the tools, they can grow. Hola, soy Lizeth Vélez, directora ejecutiva de la Asociación de los Contratistas Hispanos de las Carolinas. Para mí es un honor servir a la comunidad hispana de la construcción aquí en Charlotte y en el condado de Mecklenburg. Estoy feliz de ser nominada y de ser la ganadora uh, como algo que del año. Eh, para mí ha sido un placer y es un placer trabajar 
con los contratistas hispanos eh, ha sido un cambio diferente. Yo nunca pensé que iba a trabajar en la construcción, pero realmente me apasiona la necesidad y la pasión que tienen los contratistas y los empresarios hispanos por salir adelante. Para mí es un placer servirlos. Congratulations to our 2022 Diversity Advocate of the Year, Lisette Vélez, with HCAC, Hispanic Contractors Association of the Carolinas. Our final award of the afternoon is for the Media Personality of the Year. This award is presented to an individual or organization who provides outstanding community engagement and exemplary coverage in support of the minority, women, and small business community in the Charlotte-Mecklenburg region. And the winner of the Media Personality of the Year goes to WFAE 90.7 FM. We are thrilled and honored to be chosen um, for this award. And so thank you all very much. And uh, we hope to keep continuing to do good work for the, for the region, so thank you. So as a news organization, WFAE um, endeavors to try and find stories that are impacting residents and um, looking at what can help them with their lives, how they're going to be affected, whether it's from politics or economics or education or the environment. We also realize that, you know, there is no, there's no black and white to every story. There are nuances and shades of gray. We want to make sure that we are trying to hear all of those voices so that people can understand what the issue is and how it will affect them so that they can make choices for their lives and then be um, better informed with what's going in, on in the community. We think that an informed community makes a better community. News has always been a part of WFAE's DNA. When we started as a university licensee over across the road at UNC Charlotte, we were primarily a classical and jazz, but there was still news. We then moved into a smooth jazz period up until the 90s, and then we, we started focusing on news talk. And one of the first things that we did um, as a news talk station is that we uh, started the show Charlotte Talks uh, with host Mike Collins. And that show has been around for almost 25 years. And he has become, I think, the, uh, the show of record within the community. If you want to know about you know, a, an issue or news that is happening in the Charlotte region, Mike is going to talk about it. Um, whether it's been politics or the environment, education, or even, you know, the arts and culture, it has come about. And I think as technology has improved, we have become more multi-platform. So you can not only get us on the air, you can hear us um, online, through phone app, um, through your smart speaker. So all of these ways that we have tried to uh, broaden our reach so that folks can get us where they need us. Um, and that also means that we have, we have expanded what we offer uh, in terms of specialty news. So for example, Bizworthy is a partnership that we have with the Charlotte Ledger, which is an electronic business newsletter. And so we have a segment once a week where our host, Marshall Terry, speaks with Tony Macia from who's the editor at the Charlotte Ledger. And they talk about some of the biggest news happenings in the business realm for that week. Um, we also have started podcasts. We have Amplifier, which is our music podcast that focuses on Charlotte area musicians. We recently relaunched our Inside Politics podcast that is going to focus on the midterm elections coming up this fall and not only with the state and federal races that are happening but we'll also look at the local races that are going to be happening um, and then also we have Tommy Tomlinson's Southbound podcast who does um, talks with southern folks who have the south has impacted their lives and their philosophy and what they do And finally, one that is always good for newcomers is called FAQ City, which is a podcast for people to ask questions that they're curious about 
in and around the Charlotte region. And we have done numerous episodes on different things that many newcomers would like to know, like Providence Crossing Providence and Queens Crossing Queens, and who is Sharon? So we have all those answers on FAQ City. So hopefully we have a wide variety of news and information that many folks in the region can uh, relate to as well as want to hear more about. Back in June, we celebrated our 40th anniversary for being on the air. And I think knowing that we have been able to be that community resource for the region for 40 years, um, I think we might have wordsmithed our mission and vision a little bit over the years, but basically um, the concept and the philosophy is the same. We want to serve the community, we want to give them the news, and we want to be a community member that they can count on um, for reliable news, factual news, uh, and information. Congratulations! to our 2022 Media Advocate of the Year, WFAE 90.7 FM. It is evident our region has great talent and its businesses and organizations are comprised of people with much dedication and heart. Let's give a round of applause and I invite you to fill the chat congratulating all of our award winners. Well, as you can imagine, this type of event doesn't happen overnight. We have a wonderful planning committee from the city of Charlotte and Mecklenburg County that work throughout the year behind the scenes to ensure all of this is put together nicely. We have the planning committee here, Venicia, Monica, and Janelli, so that they can share with us their experience. Ladies, share with us, how was the whole journey putting the Grounds of Enterprise Awards Ceremony 2022 together. Benicia, how about if you share your ideas? Well, um, Rocio, we were excited to receive 36 nominations from the community. And after our screening process of eligibility, that dwindled down to about 30 nominations. Once they dwindled down, Janelli took over and secured the judges, and the process continued with the judges. Yes, it was a wonderful process to get together with ecosystem partners and local businesses for the judging commentary, especially um, to review all the nominations, to see all the comments, to get feedback from them. And then after working with the judges, working with the video production team, and then working on the script, as well as scheduling for a lot of commentary from the city leadership and Denver County leadership as well. It was a pleasant experience to celebrate the MWSB nominees for this year, and it was just a wonderful experience as a team. That's great, Janelli. And Monica, please share with us, how was your experience? How did you um, support the planning committee in this process? This process is truly a, a team effort. Uh, we come together starting off bi-weekly to weekly to almost daily right up to the event airing. Um, we, we want to thank the community for submitting all those nominations and really being involved in taking on that responsibility of saying, hey, you are doing a great job. Someone needs to hear about you. We want to share your business, your talents, and let us know, let you all know that we appreciate you. Uh, so thank you to the nominators for nominating the nominees. Uh, congratulations to all the nominees. Uh, and especially to the winners. Um, a few last words of encouragement would be uh, to continue to believe in your work, continue to believe in your vision, and continue to believe in your Wonderful. Thank you so much. I can see how um, this uh, event that has happened for the past 11 years continues to be a successful event. And I know we're very hopeful that in 2023, we're going to go back to do this in person, right? Yes. Sure. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Well, as we bring today's event to a close, we would like to give a special thanks to the individuals that submitted nominations, to all of the nominees, and to the winners. 
Each award winner receives a Crowns of Enterprise Award, publicity in the City of Charlotte, Mecklenburg County, and Charlotte Business Resources websites, and community visibility through numerous social media platforms. We would like to acknowledge the vendors that made this virtual event possible. Stream Tech Pro for bringing this virtual event to life, Bob Williams Specialty for our awards, Savory Moments for catering our judges' lunch, and the 2022 Crowns of Enterprise judges for their time and dedication. Special thanks to Mecklenburg County and the City of Charlotte. Thanks to City of Charlotte and Mecklenburg County's public information, communication, and marketing departments, the elected officials, and those that participated in today's event. Thanks to Chairman George Dunlap, Commissioner Susan Rodriguez McDowell, Mayor Pro Tem Julie Eiselt, and Councilman Malcolm Graham. Thanks to the planning team, Mecklenburg County, Jamelia Davis, Monica Greer, Janelli Rosales, Tammy Thompson, Peter Zeidler, City of Charlotte, Stephen Cocker, Benicia Drawn, Beverly Sanders, Shawnee Thomas. On behalf of Mecklenburg County and the City of Charlotte, we want to thank all of you for joining us in celebrating the success of our local small businesses. You saw the names of the award winners. At the end, we will scroll through the names of the 2022 nominees. We want to see more companies receiving this high honor, so stay tuned and we will let you know when the nominations for the next year will open. This concludes the Crowns of Enterprise Award 2022. We look forward to seeing all of you at the 2023 Crowns of Enterprise Award Ceremony. Gracias.